Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, this chapter uh, is somehow, um, let's say, different than the previous one. Uh, chapter 5 uh, presented the setting of the story of the novel in general, Cocktown, and described how the uh, city is uh, destroyed by the Industrial Revolution and uh, the smoke and the brick is covered with ashes and the smoke. And um, also showed uh, some uh, references uh, about... Uh, the um, about the characters um, and how the people of Cooktown suffer in such an atmosphere and um, we are introduced to Mr. Grant Grind and Mr. Bounderby uh, planning to visit uh, the uh, father of Sissy in order to tell him to uh, remove Sissy from uh, from the school and the encounter that took place um, between uh, them and Sissy and Bidzer. Uh, chapter 6 is entitled This Larry's Horse Mansion. Uh, as you know, uh, the novel started with the school of facts so from the very beginning, line 1, facts, facts, facts. And uh, chapter 6 is uh, presenting the counterpart of that school, which is the circus people. So as I as we discussed earlier, we have two schools contradicting each other: the school of facts and the school of fancy, or, or we can say the world of facts and the world of fancy. And each school and world has its own principles and its own ideas and characters that represent that school. So in the previous five chapters, we understood uh, what uh schools we have uh, what principles we have in the school of facts and how those people deal with life represented by grad grind bounder b um, chokum child and others now the writer uh, tries to uh, present the new school you might feel that it is a little bit late to present the characters or the setting or the uh the uh people of uh, fancy but we can say that uh, this uh, is uh, the beginning of uh, the uh, presentation of the school of uh, offense. So we can say that this chapter presents the contradiction, clarifies the contradiction that we read in chapter 1 and chapter uh, 7. We can make a, a balance, let's say, a counterpart between chapter 1, which represents the school of facts, and chapter 6, which represents the school of fancy. The chapter in general uh, uh, starts with the title, Slary's Horsemanship. Slary, as we uh, understand, is the, uh, the circus man, the man who runs the circus in which the, the people uh, of the circus uh, work. So it gives a simple introduction uh, about uh, the circus. Uh, back in chapter uh, 5, we learned that uh, Grad Grind and Bounder B are coming to visit uh, Sissy's father in order to ask him to remove Sissy from the school. So now Sissy says that father is not in our room, sir. She said with a face of great surprise because it is not something usual that her father uh, does not exist at this time if you wouldn't mind walking in I will find him directly they walked in and Sissy having set two chairs uh, for them and then moved to um, check on her father and ask him to meet uh, the gentleman uh, so father must have gone to down to the booth to the shop I don't know why he should go there but he must be there I'll bring him in a minute in a minute she was gone directly without her bonnet with her long dark childish hair streaming behind her what does she mean said mr gratgrind back in a minute it's more than a mile off so here uh, there is a kind of contradiction between bounder between a gratgrind the man of facts the man of two and two are four and this the metaphorical speech of uh, Sissy, who uh, says metaphorically that she's gonna uh, bring him in a minute, uh, which is uh, which means that she will bring him in in um, 
a few minutes time uh, so uh, later they encounter a new character from the school of fancy his description is his face a close shaven thin solo was shaded by a great quantity of dark hair and then a smelt of lamb oil straw orange peel so the, the description is very poor as you see is very bad description and uh, poor character whom we know as mr e w b childers look at the name childers a man of children the man who is concerned with children he, it is uh, somehow um, the opposite of M Chokum child that person from the school of facts is supposed to choke children and kill them this man childers is supposed to entertain children and provide them with amusement and uh, happiness so uh, this is uh, the man of the circus that we first encounter in this chapter uh, whom uh, uh, whom the, the writer describes uh, accurately by your leave, gentlemen, said Childers, a glancing around the room. It was you, I believe, that we are wishing to see Jew. His daughter has gone to fetch him, but I can't wait. I will have, I will leave a message for him with you. You see, my friend, Mr. Bounder, be put in. Now, they cannot wait because they are people who respect time, according to the philosophy of Grind and Bounder be. Um, so Bounder B exclaims that we are the kind of people who know the value of time. The school of the facts, uh, people, Bounder B and Gradgrind. And you are the kind of people, he is addressing Childers, and he means the uh, school of fancy people. You are the kind of people who do not or who don't know the value of time because they waste their time in the circus. Uh, and playing and uh, enjoying their time and uh, providing amusement so he is let's say um, uh, contempting them in somehow يعني, uh, in, in certain uh, means I have not Childers uh, replies after surveying him if you mean what you can make more money of your time than I can of mine i should judge from your appearance from the way you look from the way you dress that you are about right because you know bounderby uh, has factories has bank has so many um so much money while they don't they are very poor they are the lower class it's still the comparison the writer wants us to feel the comparison between these two um classes the class of the of the, of the high people bounderby and greg Ryan. And the lower class of uh, the circus people who are very uh, poor and um, uh, suffering in such a, um, a poor life. Um, now we encounter a new right, a new character, Kidder Minister. Um, Kidder Minister, as told that Mr. Childers. Master Kidder Minister was Cupid's mortal name. Another character who is supposed to work in the circus and amuse uh, the children. Um, now they start discussing uh, what happened to Mr. Jupe, Sissy's father. Uh, Mr. Jupe is another worker at the circus and he started suffering recently because he cannot uh, work well, he cannot do his job. He cannot perform his works in the right way, in the correct way, uh, the way he used to do. So he decided to quit his job. So he has missed his tip very often lately and didn't do what he ought to do. He didn't do what he ought to do. Was short in his leaps. He wasn't uh, working very well and bad in his tumbling, Mr. Childer interpreted and uh, this means that he that his work is not good enough to provide him with the money uh, required um, so that he could uh, support and provide for uh, sissy uh, you know mr gradgrind and bounderby are 
uh, let's say um, making sarcasm or sarcasting of uh, the uh, circus people nine oils the one that Sissy used to take in order to heal her father's bruises Mary Lex is the name of the dog that uh, that used to work with Jube at the circus a missing tip garters banners so they kind of making fun of these uh, words and terms uh, so here we are back to the message that Bounder B wanted to convey to Mr. Jube <coughs> uh, Mr. Childers here interrupts saying that Mr. Jupe will never receive will never receive the message because he left he deserted do you mean that he deserted his daughter yes I mean with a nod he was goosed last night last night this quotation refers to the suffering that uh, Mr. Jupe was exposed to he was suffering the last night he was suffering the night before last and he was suffering today so he has lately got into the way of being always um, mistreated suffering whatever this uh, word mean he cannot stand it so he was supposed he was forced to leave his job and uh, move to some other place uh, and uh, and the same way he is uh, leaving and deserting his daughter good interrupted Bounderby this is good grad grind a man so fond of his daughter that he runs away from her this is devilish uh, good very well said Bounderby I was born in a ditch then we are back to Bounderby and his slogan this is um, repeated uh, one more time I was born in a ditch my mother ran away from me do I excuse her what do I call her for it? I call her probably the very worst woman that ever lived in the world, except my drunken uh, a grandmother. I'm trying to skip the quotations that uh, do not offer so much information for us. Jupe sent his daughter out on an errand not an hour ago to bring him the nine oils and then was seen to slip out himself with his hat over his eyes a bundle tied up in a handkerchief under his arm she will never believe it of him but he has cut away and left her he left sissy in order to be cared for by um, some other person who can support and provide her with uh, her needs um, so here the writer mentions something about the kind of relation between Jupe and his daughter said Mr. Gadgrind why will she never believe it because those two were one because they were never alone because up to this time he seemed to doubt upon her so they were very close here we need to, to, to remember the kind of the relationship that Jupe and Sissy has and compare it to the kind of the relationship that Louisa and uh, his fa her father um, have and later with more uh, feedback about these relations we can balance and see which relation is stronger and which one that the, the writer uh, prefers and wants us to um, uh, criticize uh, then uh, poor Sissy is said by Mr. Gradgrind. Although Gradgrind is a man of facts and he is a hard-hearted man, but see there is a kind of um, let's say a flexibility and some kind, some tinge of mercy in his own heart. He says, "Poor Sissy, he had better have apprenticed her." Said Childers, giving his hair another uh, shake. Uh, apprenticed hair means that uh, it's a kind of a tradition followed in the um, 17th, 18th, 19th century societies in Europe that they send their children while they are very young to work with uh, some skilled people like a carpenter, a blacksmith, a businessman in order to learn the apprentice in return of nothing. They receive nothing, just they learn 
فقط يتعلمون من عنده يعني صانع نعتبره احنا صانع uh, so when they learn everything uh, they go and start their own uh, business so Sissy was not involved in the uh, circus because it's a little bit dangerous uh, for her and now she is very uh, she is not that young to learn uh, according to them so uh, she has skipped uh, this move um, Mr. Grand Grind I came to tell him that her connections made her uh, not an object uh, for the school and that she must not attend anymore this was the message that was supposed to be uh, communicated to her father but um, they were um, they were astonished or surprised to find that her father has deserted her last of all appeared Mr. Slary according to whom the title of the chapter is uh, inscribed Slary is the circus uh, man he is the owner of the circus a stout man as already mentioned with one fixed eye and one loose eye his voice if it can be called so like the efforts of a broken old pair of bellows uh, flabby surface مترهل الشكل مالته muddled head which was never sober لا هو صاحي مية بالمية ولا هو um, drunk hundred uh, percent and he says thick wire thick wire means sick wire which means landlord or um, a master or sir uh, said Mr. Slary he was troubled with asthma he had a problem of asthma rabu and whose breath came far too thick and heavy for the letter S and he couldn't pronounce the sound S instead he pronounced S as th, th. instead of sick wire he said thick wire you need to get used to his uh, speech I will read um, in, a, in the correct way that the writer um, uh, not according to uh, a slurry your servant this is a bad piece of business this is you've heard of my clone and his dog being supposed to have a morst he addressed mr grad he addressed mr grading Rind, who answered yes well sequire taking off his hat it's in it is it your intention to do anything for the poor girl squire he is asking Grant Grant if he is able to do anything for Sissy. And then later we will see that Grant Grant will uh, take responsibility of Sissy and uh, take her with him. Oh, my dear father, my good. Now Sissy learns that her father left her. And she says that um, these sentences My good father, where are you gone? You are gone to try to do me some good, I know. Uh, you are gone away for my sake I am sure and how miserable and helpless you will be without me poor poor father until you come back these words are said by Sissy after she learned that her father has uh, left her what's your name your father has here Bounderby being very direct tells Sissy the truth your father has absconded you has left you deserted you and you must not expect to see him again as long as uh, you live um, well then I come I who came here to inform the father of the poor girl that she could not be received I am willing to take the charge of you Jew and educate and to educate you and to provide for you the only condition over and above your good behavior I make is you decide now at once whether to accompany me or remain here. So Grad Grind offered Sissy uh, a position, a place for her to educate her and to provide for her. But she must tell him her opinion now. If you accompany me now, it's understood that you communicate no more with any of your friends who are here present. So he wanted to cut her away from the circus people because of her negative effect in his school so here uh, Aslari encourages um, Sissy to take this offer uh, 
uh, although they love her and they want her to stay with them but of course uh, the offer made by Gradgrind is very very generous and she will um, have a better life with them it's Larry that's my name Squire not ashamed of it known all over England and always pays its way so here is the kind of the touching scene where uh, CC leaves and um, um, says goodbye to her friends here we have um, Sissy she said in another burst of tears she wanted to keep the nine oils with her in case her father comes back and refers that I must keep it for him if you please she is expecting him uh, to come back here is an important point made by Islary um, just like a slogan for him the squire continued Islary more Percy than ever by much talking they can't be always a working Islary he is, is talking about the people of England the people uh, their own people they can't be always a working uh, consider you we must consider the uh, the bad language the grammatical mistakes here that indicate the lower level of education of those people uh, make the best of us not the worst before that they can't be always working no they can't uh, be always a learning so they cannot always work or learn they need a kind of amusement that's what the circus provides make the best of us not the worst i've got my living out of the horse riding all my life i know but i consider that i lay down the philosophy of the subject when i say to you squire make the best of us not the worst so this is the philosophy of the circus people represented by mr Slary. this is his own slogan when we compare it to the slogan of the school of facts no there we have facts 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 alone are wanted in life plant nothing else and uh, root out everything else which is very uh, difficult uh, to live and to um, uh, to go with instead Slary said Slary said um, they can't be always working or they can't be always learning make the best of us not uh, the worst so this chapter provides a new point towards the circus people towards so the writer try to uh, clarify uh, the mysteries clarifying the fake points and uh, puts the reader in a place where he can compare between these two circ these two wells or these two uh, schools and which one uh, is better for uh, for the human beings now we understand as readers that the writer is criticizing the school of facts and the system and saying that they are wrong um, compared to the school of um, fancy so and to sum up this chapter the chapter presents a new characters from the world of fancy as you see Childer, Skidder, Minister, Mr. Slurry uh, those are the characters of the circus and Mr. Jupa oh, uh, also but we did not meet him because he already left uh, the school of fancy is presented as a counterpart to the school of facts as i explained earlier the contradiction between a gradgrind and bounderby from um, from one one uh, side in front of the circus people those people are very formal they pay attention to the time uh, they uh, care about their own needs while the circus people um, are sacrificing they provide amusement for the other people because people cannot always work or learn they also need uh, amusement Sissy's father and his issue is uh, explained in detail in chapter 6 uh, the scene where um, the circus people farewell uh, I'll see uh, Sissy off and how grad grind uh, shows the touches of mercy and offers sissy a place at home to uh, provide her uh, with her needs and finally the writer uh, 
concludes the chapter with uh, this uh, slogan the philosophy of uh, the circus people make the best of us not the worst yani we need to take the time and we need to amuse ourselves we need to feel um, uh, our life instead of only facts only work only uh, learn these are the main points that this chapter uh, provides um, thank you and see you in the next chapter